The SE535 is a triple driver, three-way crossover in-ear monitor by Shure, released in 2010 as the refresh model for the SE530. Today, we will be guiding you through the teardown process and showing you the internals of the IEM. For the teardown process, you will only need a pair of sharp craft knife or pen knife, some small prying tools and a pair of tweezers. First off, slot the sharp edge of the knife into the part line on the shell of the IEM. From here, apply a sideways leverage in a prying motion to separate the shells. The SE535 shells are lightly glued together so we do not need to use a lot of force. After the shells are separated and you have a groove to work with, gently slide the prying tool, or in my case, my fingernails, into the slot and slowly work your way around the entire part line of the shell to loosen the glue. The shell should then pop open. Be very careful when the shells separate, as the female MMCX connector will almost always be on the different side of the shell where the drivers are. Once the shells are separated, we will first remove the MMCX connector from the shell to prevent any accident from happening. The ribbon cable on this is quite fragile. Now that we have access to the whole driver assembly, we can remove it from the casing itself. The drivers are held together by the silicone gasket at the front end and a metal plate which slots into a holder at the back. We can remove the drivers by lifting the back metal plate out of the slot holder gently using a pair of tweezers. Be very careful here as the slot holder is made out of thin plastic and is very fragile. Putting the assembly back is just as easy. Place the silicone gasket into the front of the shell and slot the metal plate at the back. Here, we can inspect the driver assembly itself. We can see the Heist driver, also known as the Tweeter, and the dual mid lows driver, the Woofer. Removing the silicone gasket from the front will expose the foam padding and the nozzles of the drivers. The foam and the silicone acts as a seal for the drivers and directs the sound into the sound nozzle of the shell. Lastly, we can remove the sound damper from the IEM nozzle itself using a special damper removal tool. Be really careful when removing or dealing with the damper as the shell is made of thin plastic and the screen itself is very fragile. Do not get the screen wet.